past, holiday snaps had to be sent away to be developed. Now, digital cameras mean pictures can be instantly viewed and shared with whomever. And it is thanks to a junior engineer who had time on his hands. In 1974, at Eastman Kodak in New York, Steve Sasson's boss was about to hand him something to keep him busy. Mr. Sasson. Yes, sir. Uh, here's a camera and a CCD chip. See what you can do with it. Yes, sir. Sasson had just finished college, and he was keen to learn. When I first started at Kodak, uh, I was uh, living a bit of a dream I had. As a kid, I was always interested in electronics, and I built stuff at home. I took parts off of old TV sets, built transmitters and stereos. I just thought it was really neat. I liked it, you know. He had a feeling that the CCD his boss had given him was the way of the future that nobody had yet exploited. The CCD, or Charged Coupled Device, was an experimental silicon chip. It was extremely small, but could store huge amounts of information by converting light into electrical charges that store data. Steve's bosses thought that if it could store data, did it have the potential for storing or capturing images? What I said is, if I'm going to store an image, I want to capture images, and then I want to be able to go around and capture different images, so I would like to build a camera. Instead of using film, he would try to capture photographs using CCD. He was picturing a camera that was completely revolutionary. Sasson thought that when the light passed through the lens and fell on the CCD, its photosensitive detectors would convert it into electrical charges. These charges would then be converted into a series of numbers that described the original image. The captured information would be stored on a magnetic tape cassette. I had no idea how to do it, uh, but I just thought I couldn't see any reason why it couldn't be built. A lab technician helped him to pilfer bits and pieces from Kodak's spare parts bins, circuit boards, chips from a used voltmeter, and an old film camera lens. Will this one work? Let's give it a try. Sasson then began to build the digital circuitry. The lens I used was a lens from an XL movie camera, you know, one of our, our Super 8 movie cameras. I used that entire lens assembly, and I, instead of having the film plane where the film would go, I put that charge coupled device chip right there. So it saved me a lot of work, because I didn't know how to design lenses, and I didn't have a budget to do any special lens. In a back room at Kodak, they assembled a tangle of wires and circuit boards. Sasson's filmless digital camera gradually took shape. The CCD was capturing the images, but they just couldn't see them. Start off to see if you could just get the device to work, and then you'd say, can I digitize it? And you sort of solve one problem after the next. The next problem was to build a special machine that could convert the digital information into an image that could be viewed. The machine would read the digital data taken from the CCD turn it into a video signal, and play it back on a TV screen. It took a few months and 10 kilograms of technology, but Sasson and his technician, Jim Schickler, finally connected the camera to the playback machine. In December 1975, they had a basic prototype. It was a box sitting on top of, of like a frame that had a bunch of circuit boards in it. The odd-looking device was the size of a toaster and weighed over three and a half kilograms. But would it work? And more importantly, whose picture to take? Sasson's or Schickler's? Sasson had a better idea. Just one second. Hold on one second. He returned with a young lab technician who is far more photogenic than either of the bleary-eyed scientists who had spent too long in the laboratory. They had worked for over a year for this moment, and all that was left was to push the button and hope. The primitive prototype took 23 seconds to capture and record the image. Then, the playback machine sent their picture to the TV. It was the moment of truth. Her face was a digital blur, but Sasson was very pleased with himself. Jim and I were staring at the monitor. 
and we were overjoyed at what we saw because we knew there were a thousand reasons why you might not see anything at all. It needs work. The scientists knew there must be a reason her image was so blurry. Hold on. Then you get the, oh, I, I know what I did. They discovered it was a simple solution, as he'd accidentally crossed two wires. So they tried again. Suddenly, the world's first digital photograph became clear. <laughs> and we were very, very happy. You know, wow, it actually does work. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. I can't even believe that. So did Kodak instantly jump on Sasson's new photographic wonder? No. Selling film and processing it had been the company's business for 136 years. So a filmless camera would be a competitor. And besides, the technology was still far too big. It was not until the 1990s, 25 years after he took his first picture, that the revolution in photo technology that Sasson started finally took off. It changed not just the way pictures are taken, but what are snapped and how they're shared. There's more opportunity to capture those images, to communicate the human condition around the world, because everybody has now access to the technology that enables them to be able to do that. And for that, Sasson received the National Medal of Technology and Innovation. He even had his picture taken beside Obama. 